Blimey, you just got up. Yeah. You look hammered. Oh, you know what it's like when you go out drinking with zombies. It's all right for them. They don't feel any different in the morning. Ah, now I know why you never had any wiring put up in here. Yeah. Anything I can do? I think this is a bit beyond Lucasid. Right, well, I'll go check last night's readouts, yeah? Yeah. No. No, no, please. Can you get the 15th station approach? Fair to Arndale. Can you drop off to the station on the way back? Liam, you still waiting? Excuse me, can you tell me the way to the cathedral library, please? Liam, are you still waiting for your fare? Yeah, still waiting. To get into the cathedral area, you have to go through the door in the tower, you know, the one we lock at night, through the central courtyard, into the inner close, past the entrance to the crypt, and the library's here. Thank you. Oh, Mum, do you think she's going to die? Thirteen people have perished from the fever this week alone, Maisie. I have never seen its like in this diocese. Nor any other. Shall I inform the bishop? No. <coughs> it may be preferable if I speak with my husband myself. He is at work in his study. Enter. Jeremiah? Is it absolutely necessary to disturb me, Catherine? The Dean is visiting presently concerning final details for my tomb. I think the crisis may be at hand. You're certain? I'm afraid so. The sepulchre yawns in wait for us all. Of that we can be sure. I, I believe she may appreciate her father's presence at this moment. Yes. Yes, of course. What of... Uh... Sleep. I thought it best to mention nothing. I had cause to administer discipline again this evening. The situation does not improve with time. The child has a disturbed nature due to the experiences suffered as a foundling. I must confess, I have been entertaining thoughts, God forgive me, that perhaps the fever has alighted upon the wrong child in the household. Do you think me wicked? No. I think you're human. Begging your pardon, Your Grace. She's calling out for you, Mum. I'll come at once. I'll be there directly. is abating. I think the danger might be over. Mother. Heavens be praised. <laughs> it's a miracle. Oh my. No, 
Ich habe einen Film. Jeremiah! Jeremiah? Excuse me, I'm doing some reading for a course. Our medical history shelf is in the back section over there. get to see the books which are locked in that cabinet over there. Do you have the key? I'm afraid permission from the archivist is required to view the restricted items. And how do I find him? Do you know you're the second person that's asked me that this morning? But I have a letter from the Archbishop. The Archbishop's office signed in his absence. I'm sorry, you've had a fruitless journey. You see, so many of our documents are susceptible to accidental damage. I have myself frequently found whole pages crumbling to dust after being touched. It's exactly to avoid unnecessary damage to the tomb that I need to check the plans before I open it. I beg your pardon? When I open up the tomb, I want to make sure that I don't... It is not possible to open up the cathedral tombs. I have permission. From an office. You might just as well have permission from a broom cupboard or a lavatory. From your own dean and your present bishop. See, I'm proposing to remove a small amount of matter for DNA analysis. Remove matter? For what purpose? Bishop Otterman's tomb has been sealed since the last known outbreak of Bones fever. We know the bishop was one of the last victims, so his body may contain... Oh, this is merely permission to gain access to the tomb. If access to the remains is involved, then the permission of the surviving members of his family is required. I'm so sorry. Then I'll get permission. In the meantime, could I have a look at the plans? But of course. Should I be able to locate them? No one's opened Bishop Ottoman's chest since 1908, when he died. Closed with the cathedral seal and kept locked by special order. There's nothing else in there? No, 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 just these plans. Thank you. I had better take charge of them until I can raise these matters with the chapter. But I thought the young man... Gone, I'm afraid. Ah, oh, the impatience of youth. Now, you will keep me informed of any further developments here, won't you? You can be sure of that, Canon. I knew I could rely on you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon.
All there is in the kitchen is a bottle of vinegar, two radishes and some mouse droppings. That's enough to even shut up Ainsley Harriet for a minute. You all right? Yeah, I think so. Look, you can have the night off. I'll keep an eye on the instruments. I could certainly do with some lager therapy. Do you want me to bring you something back? No. Or should I call the docs? Just go. Okay. I'll be fine. See ya. Sorry. Time of the month. What is that thing? It's a recurrent problem. Let me have a look at that wound. No. Please. It's fine. It heals up most of the time. This is the best thing. Hot water and plenty of salt. How in the world did you get something like that? It's a long story. So nothing's happened recently, then? Not recently. Why do you ask? I don't know. Is everything Canon Black covers up to do with demons? Here's the hot water bottle you asked for, Canon. Having an early night? Quite the reverse.
John, you never told me what happened to get you into all of this. No, I haven't. I think I should warn you, this isn't a very good moment for my desert island discs. Sorry, I didn't mean to pry. Forget I asked. You won't mention this to the boys, will you? They like to think I'm invulnerable. I guess that from your Superman suit. I only went to the library to look up some stuff. What kind of stuff? I'm not sure, really. Something that might tell me a little more about Rich, I suppose. And that's when I overheard it all. So, who is this bloke who wants to open up Bishop Ottoman's tomb? I don't know. He had the look of some kind of postgrad. And he was researching into this... What was it? Bones fever. I don't know anything about it. Can look in my books when I get home. But Kevin hasn't picked up anything recently. No. And, uh... The instruments haven't shown anything for weeks. Oh, well, then, Black could be just dead against DNA research. A lot of people are. Unless there's some other reason he doesn't want the tomb opened. Touches what? I don't know. But I have a feeling the answer's on here. Does it mean anything to you? No, not to me. Nine six zero two four seven. Miss Otterman. Speaking. I'm sorry to bother you, uh, but I'm looking for relatives of the late Bishop Otterman who is buried in the cathedral. That was my father. Your father? Yes. I'm incredibly old, actually. My doctor is constantly amazed that I haven't begged it yet. My, my name is Randolph Mason. I'm a postgraduate at the University of Dublin. I'm, I'm doing some research, and I wondered whether it might be possible for me to meet you for a brief while. Well, you'll have to come here. Um, my motorbike's at the garage at the moment. Uh, that, that's good. How about tomorrow, 12 o'clock? So, uh, thank you very much. I doubt that I'll be much use. Memory like a sieve. Goodbye. Goodbye. Enter. You called, Cannon? Yes, I'm going to sleep now. Empty the shredder, will you? Shine. Hey, I went on the net when I got home and I found something on the electoral roll worth celebrating with double egg muffins all round. No, 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 don't put that on there. This is... The... 
없으면 은 Find all the hot things onto this quickly. I'm going to make you bloody mind. Kevin, what are you doing here? I bought you something. No. No need to mention it to her. She's probably thought better of it. <laughs> yes, thank you. Problems, Canon. Uh, that was the librarian telling me that the nurse requested access to the demonology section yesterday. He's just come in again. Evidently, Miss Atkins has yet to realize that a thirst for knowledge can be a dangerous thing. To any who seek to examine the contents of this tomb, I, Patrick McGrath, Dean of the Cathedral in this year of our Lord, 1908, beg all to heed this warning. More than you desire shall be disturbed if this is ever opened. All right, thanks. I'll call back later. Uh, Here's the rest of it. Here. Ah, oh, right. Nice try, Kevin. I think putting this back together might tax even my patience. What was it you said you found on the electoral roll? Oh, yeah. How many incredibly old Miss Ottomans do you think there are in the city? They're all here, filed by year. Thanks. If you need anything else, just give me a call. Well, do. Minicab. Did you order a minicab to the hospital? Yeah, yeah. I'll um, I'll be there in a minute. I'll get my things. Better get going. Yeah. Sit down. <laughs> I I'm afraid I put him in rather a bad mood. I, uh, I take it you refused permission to open the tomb? Oh, yes. Well, of course, I understand research is very important. I wonder if I could ask you to get my cigarettes for me. I, I like to save my knees. Yes, of course. They're there on the sideboard.
I attribute my long life to plenty of cigarettes, fatty food, and debauchery. <laughs> You're a clergyman, aren't you? The civvies don't fool me for a moment. I was. Did they send you to try to persuade me to donate a sample of my father's body to medical science as well? No. <laughs> as a matter of fact, someone at the cathedral is quite intent that the tomb is never opened under any circumstances. Ah, oh, yes, of course they would. What is your interest in the matter? I don't really know yet. But if you felt able to confide in me, I can assure you it would never become public. It may do a lot of good. There is no possibility that my father's body can be disinterred from the tomb. You see, it's empty. His body was never found. The dean thought it best to say that it was the fever and that his body was inside. But nobody can say what happened. He disappeared on the night that I recovered from the fever. Disappeared? Of course, I don't remember anything about it. But the dean was very concerned. It, uh, it was considered too ungodly to admit it to anyone. <laughs> so that's all I know. The terrible family secret. Did nobody see anything? Yes. There was one person who witnessed the whole thing. My sister, Pandora. And what became of your sister? I'm afraid she ran away. My mother never got over it. She spent the rest of her life in an asylum. Yeah, give us a pound back. No, that's fine. Well, go on, you've got to make a living. Thank you. Thanks. Hey! Hey! I tried to ring you earlier. Oh? I decoded the paper you brought. It's some kind of warning not to open up the bishop's tomb. Is it really? I spoke to his daughter. The tomb's actually empty, but that's not the whole of it. Something's not right here. Oh, you bet it isn't. Hey, what? what? What have I done? Well, you tell me, John. What? Well, you're so obsessed with other people's secrets. How come you fail to mention your own? Or did being accused of four murders just slip your mind? What? I went back to the library, all right? I saw it in the newspaper archives. How much did you read? Just the headlines. That there have been several deaths and that you were somehow implicated. I decided I wanted to hear the rest of you. There's nothing to hear. For some reason, the police didn't believe that they were all victims of a demon I was pursuing. Well, why didn't you explain it to them? What was I supposed to say? I failed to stop those deaths being caused by something inhuman. And he gave me this as a permanent reminder when we met. Is that what started this whole thing off? You could say that. What happened? Why don't you go back and look? Oh, OK, fine, I'm sorry. I won't pry into your life anymore, all right? When you want to tell me if... I'll listen. I have to get on. There's no record of the Pandora Ottoman whatsoever. Try a different search motor. <laughs> Engine. Try them all. Well, she must be somewhere, dead or alive. Something's not right here. Look, the old woman's told you why Black wants to keep the tomb in opened. They lied about the bishop's body. So where did it go? 
Oh, does it matter? Hello? Hi. Hello. How's the back trouble? <laughs> Bleeding awful. <laughs> they say the bishop's body was missing. That's all his daughter says. In the papers at the time, it mentioned that the other bodies of fever victims had vanished, perhaps all of them. Oh? Well, Mr. Mason will have looked that up. He must know there's no chance of getting a sample from any other person who had the disease. So, he won't bother to try. But he doesn't know about the tomb. As far as he's concerned, the body inside is his only chance of getting the DNA matter he needs. Yeah, but the daughter refused permission. What do you think that's going to stop a dedicated researcher? You know what we're like. I know what I'd do, permission or not. You're right. We better find him before he blunders onto something serious. I'll call you back later. Um, Kevin, this stuff's a dead loss. Can you get rid of it? Is there any way of finding out where this guy Mason's staying? Um, not unless he booked it on the net. We haven't got much time anyway. It's probably already at the crypt. Kevin, what are you picking up? <laughs> I better get a move on.
this is good, Doddington. It's the chief verger cannon. They think there's been a break in at the cathedral. Well, somebody better be dead. Hello? You were right. He was at the cathedral. What happened? I'm not sure. I didn't manage to see anything. There's people crawling all over the place now, so I came back. I knew it. He tried to break into the tomb. No, that's not all. Kevin picked up bad vibes just beforehand. I think something else turned up to greet him. Well, what do you mean, something else? I need some sleep. The electricity meters run out again, so I sent Kevin and Toby home. We'll reassess the whole thing in the morning. I'll meet you in the close at 11 to take a look inside the crypt. Oh, good. Another crypt morning. I do so enjoy them. I know. That's why I suggested it. I'll see you there. John? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no. Closed today, sorry, madam. Why is it closed? We had a break in last night. Oh dear, was there any damage? One of the tombs was vandalized. We'll be opening again as soon as it's cleared up. I'm sorry to hear that. Try us again later. Hey, I don't need a cab today. Yeah, you do. I haven't got enough cash. It's prepaid. By who? Your friend. John? Yeah, he told me to give you this. Sorry, I must have dropped off there. You found her all right. No problem. This is Liam. He introduced himself to me last night. Yes, we've met before. In the library. That's where he saw the newspaper report on me. When I saw him again last night, I knew he was the one that I had to tell. Liam, tell her your story. The story your great-grandfather told you. Well, it begins in Ireland. Ireland centuries ago. Fever has come. No one knows from where, but come it has. And it's a terrible, terrible fever. Cuts a swathe through the people. Death, death, death unending. In one small village, a child lies dying. Her parents, they're dead already. And now it comes for her. She looks up from her bed and she sees it. Costa Burla. Death coach. Yeah, the death coach. 
Once the death coach has arrived, they cannot go back empty-handed. And so her time has come. But this is no ordinary child. This is a child of evil. She makes a devilish pact with the coachman. That she is allowed to live on. She must give up her soul and become a banshee. And so in return for life eternal. The banshee girl must follow the fever. Follow its journey. Secreting herself in each new place. And when death comes again, as death surely will, the Banshee girl will call out loud and clear for the cost of her life, which will come to that place and take that person directly to hell while the Banshee lives on. I don't understand what this has got to do with the tomb. Tell you your full name, Liam. My name is Liam McGrath. My great-grandfather was dean of this cathedral in 1908, and he warned us, he warned us all, that someone would come one day and try and open the tomb again, and that he would bring great danger on us all. Liam found out what Mason was researching and followed him over from Dublin. He's been trying to find someone who'll believe his story for years. As a result, he spent most of his life in various institutions. What does this all mean? Toby found this in the adoption records this morning. Hello? Oh, it's you. Miss Waterman. There's something you need to know. I feel responsible for all this. Are you sure the young man has vanished? He's been missing from his B&B since last night. He never returned to collect his stuff. Oh, dear. These must be quite valuable by now. <laughs> I'm not entirely senile. I had them out last night when my cousin's granddaughter was here. Uh, little girls never change. That particular one was Pandora's favorite. Tell me, your sister Pandora, was she by any chance adopted? Yes, she was, as a matter of fact. Why? I think the story about your father's tomb may not be the whole truth. My bet is that if we'd been able to see the plans, they might have shown a cavity somewhere in the body of the structure. What are you suggesting? I was wondering. Those are old keys to the cathedral, aren't they? Yes, as a matter of fact, they are. Could I borrow them just for a short while? Mr. Strange. Are you absolutely sure you're doing the right thing? I hope so. Very well, then. Do you think this is safe? Should be. If what I think is correct. What do you think? That Mr. Mason released a banshee from its prison in the wall cavity or some such nonsense. Thank you, by the way, for not keeping us waiting too long. It is rather cold in here. I'm pleased not to have disappointed you. Miss Ottoman, I think you know. I'm sorry. I had to tell him. This has gone on long enough. I believe you come to inspect the bishop's tomb. Please don't let me stop you. But first, I think Miss Atkins deserves an explanation, don't you? Very well. Perhaps you'll allow me 
to tell her the real secret that Miss Ottoman has spent her long life fighting to preserve. John? It would seem that Bishop Ottoman's dean, Patrick McGrath, came from a family with a history of paranoid schizophrenia. Moreover, his own dark torment was a bizarre obsession with a story he'd heard as a child about a banshee who disposed of the bodies of those who had died at Bones Fever. During an outbreak of the fever in the early part of 1900, several victims did vanish. And on the night of the bishop's disappearance, Miss Ottoman's sister, Pandora, was discovered out of her bedroom. She was known to be unruly and disobedient. Consequently, Dean McGrath became obsessed with the idea that Pandora was, in fact, the Banshee. Casting aside Mrs. Ottoman's protests, his insane delusions convinced him that the solution lay in his own hands. And so, having stopped up his ears against the so-called Banshee's fatal cry, and knowing of a cavity behind one of the wall panels of the newly completed tomb, he decided to dispose of the hellish child where it could do no more harm. Mrs. Ottoman never recovered from the ordeal of this terrible night, the second innocent victim of another man's demented fixation with demons. John, tell him what happened. When the young postgrad discovered that the bishop's tomb was empty, he stumbled across something else, something he hadn't bargained on. And he hasn't been seen since. Yes. I'm not surprised he fled the town. Having come upon this. Pandora Ottoman. I'm sorry you've been obliged to see this, but I'm afraid it's a hazard of the company you keep. And now, if you'll excuse me, please lock up after you. We like to keep out the riffraff. I wish you could have been spared this. We were wrong about everything. Leah must have imagined the whole thing. Miss Osman, can we help you home? Oh, thank you. It's been rather a strain. I'm sorry. You must have loved your sister very much. Oh, she was the sweetest thing that ever walked the earth. We did everything together, everything. We were so alike. Of course. You were also adopted by the bishop. Weren't you? How old are you now? My guess is about four or five hundred years. Five hundred and thirty-two, as a matter of fact. Pandora wasn't the Banshee. It was you. Till you blew your cover by summoning the death coach for Bishop Ottoman. It was only right that he was taken. He never let Pandora be. He was obsessed with disciplining her. It was so easy for me to slip away and do it. Somebody who spent a lifetime following the fever would have no trouble faking it to put others off the scent. You didn't figure on the Dean identifying your sister as the Banshee and sealing her alive in the tomb. Be quiet! Buried alive because of you. The first human being you ever cared about. No! It's time to bring this to its conclusion. The 
shouldn't have done that. Why? Coming. Run! I can't move. My legs are frozen. Do you remember what I said about being safe? Yeah. I may be too optimistic. Did your boy made me do? Nearly a hundred years I resisted for Pandora's sake. Let myself age. Turned away from the dark until he came. And I made use of my keys. He could have taken part of her body. I had to call the coach for him. You killed him! The coach took him. Once called, it cannot return empty. Will it be you that goes? Or you? Which one of you is most tired of living? Tired of waiting? Weary of this so-called existence. It must be very hard, never being able to die. And having to live with what you did to Pandora. You have no idea. Let her go. Goodbye, Mr. Strange. Thank you for at least giving me this. That's one minicab you don't want to take. <laughs> Where do you want them? Somewhere in the middle. Who was she? A little girl. To her. It's a long story. Can we go to McDonald's now? Yes, I suppose so. Have you paid for this? Cathedral, relatives? Oh, no. We owe her. Come on, I'll buy you a happy meal. If you're good, you can keep the toy. Thanks. Now, 
Now, what would you do if somebody stole your mind and you found out your whole life was a fake? Well, it's the Arnie action adventure Total Recall after the news here on BBC One. Oh, and on BBC Three, if you missed Cutting It last week, you can catch up tonight. Starts in about five minutes.